What's up, guys? It's three-time NFL Pro Bowler All-Decade Return Specialist Josh Cribs. I want to welcome you to the College Sports Connection Podcast where AA Alex and AJ host the Mid-American Conference Best. Alright everybody, welcome back to the College Sports Connection Podcast. I'm your host, Alex the Captain. Joining me as always, AJ the Guru. What's going on everybody? AJ, welcome back. We are officially in bowl season. It is postseason for all of college football and the month of December is going to be nothing but chaos. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. It's hard to believe we're at this point of the season already. I feel like this these past four months or whatever flew by. Sure. But yeah, you mentioned we're here. Bowl season starting tomorrow or no? Starting Friday. Saturday. Friday. Friday. Yep. Yeah. Friday night starting with some action. So that's going to be fun to uh, get into. But we have a few things we need to get into that we did a couple of weeks ago. We've been kind of off the air here, busy with life and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But uh, we covered uh, the MAC championship up in Detroit, uh, where Kent State and uh, Northern Illinois battled. And, you know, it, it went as expected. Northern Illinois looked really good. Northern Illinois looked absolutely phenomenal. They were firing on all cylinders. And I think that was part of the narrative you and I talked about leading into the MAC championship is it's so hard in college football to beat the same team twice in the same season. Kent state, as everybody knows, came away with a pretty fun 52 to 49 victory over Northern Illinois about four weeks ago. Northern Illinois came back to the MAC championship, said they didn't like that feeling of losing, ended up punching Kent State in the mouth 41 to 23 to secure their sixth MAC championship in program history, their fifth since the game has been moved to Detroit. Yeah, and they're one of the teams who, you know, they 0 and 6 last season. Uh, you know, this is Coach Hammock's third year at the helm of that program. And it's been a rough two years, to say the least, but he finally has the right guys in the right spot. And, you know, we talked to him at media day and his goal was to be back in Detroit. And he, he hit his goal and he exceeded it by winning. Uh, we got to talk to him pregame. He was excited. He thought his guys were ready to go. Mm-hmm. And, and they were. Rocky Lombardi was fantastic. Yeah, Rocky looked good. I mean, that, that whole offense was just clicking. The defense is what I was most impressed with because I know Kent State stored 23 points. But, I mean, the, the Northern Illinois defense just came out and they were firing on all cylinders. They had turnovers they forced picks they i mean they just did everything they needed to do and that score indicates the game was a lot closer than what it actually was if you really look at it scoreline wise that late touchdown was a garbage time touchdown kent state didn't break 20 minus that official late late game touchdown yeah you know another illinois defense you mentioned it, it looked fantastic uh, they were able to keep dustin crumb kind of you know uncomfortable in the pocket. I know we mentioned it post game on our Facebook or we would do a live on Instagram or Twitter, whatever we did. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Justin Crum looked very uncomfortable in the pocket. He was overthrowing receivers. He wasn't hitting, hitting he wasn't hitting his receivers um, and stride like he had in weeks past. Uh, NIU put a lot of pressure on him, but also their DBs played tight man to man coverage. And uh, they were fun to watch. They were able to shut him down. I think the second or third play of the game, Crum went deep. And he wanted to set a tone early, and he had overshot his receiver. I think it was Cephas, and um, overshot him, and then just couldn't quite connect the rest of the day. Sure, and I and I think you, you look at how that how they played, and I think you know first off, hats off to Sean Lewis for getting Kent State back to that game. Right, they they did everything they needed to do to win the MAC East, including that thrilling victory over Miami to secure the MAC East championship uh, the week before heading to Detroit. But I think that. That's the kind of the tale of two different um, two different teams for the MAC championship. Northern Illinois locked it up with two weeks to go in the season, so they did lose that game to Western Michigan to close out the regular season. But when you've got your starters resting, you're trying to keep them fresh for MAC championship game versus Kent State, who had to battle every single guy into overtime to try mm-hmm. to get back to Detroit. That, I mean, that's that's just tough. I mean, now you've got guys who you needed to play so you could get back to Detroit. A lot of injuries and, you know, just nagging bruises and bumps to get get yourself lined up in a position to get to Detroit. And 
Northern Illinois on the day looked like the better team from first whistle to the end of the game. Yeah, they really did. You know, we talked to Rocky Lombardi in the press conference in the post game, and I didn't know this until you had told me, but they only had four seniors on the roster. Yep. And 76 freshmen. Which is just uh, insane. One of the youngest teams in college amount. football. Absolutely. And if they're this good, this late in the season, I think they're gonna be uh they're gonna be a problem in the Mac for the next couple of years. Yeah, I think so. I mean, you, you talk about I think a lot of those freshmen, not not all of them were true freshmen. A lot of them got that free year of eligibility from last year. But back at Media Day, Coach Hammock talked about how invaluable that was for those guys to still have four years of eligibility and what it's going to mean for the program moving forward. And right now, Northern Illinois doing any kind of recruiting that you watch that MAC championship game, you're excited to be a part of that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, one thing, too, we noticed from sitting up in the uh, over the seventh story, it felt like. Yeah, um, it was loud. Both oh, yeah. teams brought a lot of fans. There's about 11,000 there total, 11, 12,000. Mm-hmm. But Kent State brought a lot of energy. And I use fans brought a lot of a lot of energy. And it was really cool to see post game being on the field, watching the fans celebrate and the team go over there and seeing their alma mater. Uh, that was a cool thing to be a part of. That was a cool thing to be a part of. So I do want to give a quick shout out to your wife, our staff photographer. Excellent, mm. excellent job um, on the field for us, taking photos, getting some great stuff down there. Um, if you guys haven't checked them out on our website yet, it's www.thecscpodcast.com. You can go on over to our photos tab and check out the 2021 MAC championship game. Faith had... I think it was something like 1,300 photos she took. Sounds about right. And I think there are about 300 of up, 300 of them up there now. And just, I mean, it, I had the toughest time picking through which photos to utilize because she just did a phenomenal job. So huge shout out to Faith for all the work she did for us. Very appreciative. Um, and yeah, it's kind again, of crazy. Great work. More access than we did. It was, yeah. We uh, so our press badges gave us limited on-field access. We could be on the field pregame. We could be on the field six minutes in left in the fourth quarter, and then, of course, all of postgame. She walked around Ford Field the entire day. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of cool for her. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she could go anywhere she wanted, and uh, she, she did a great job. Very, very excited about that. And, you know, something new for her, too. So it worked out well. Worked out really well. But I mean, you know, just talking about that experience, that was a great experience. Thank you to the Mid American Conference. Thank you to Jeremy Guy for allowing us the opportunity to come and continue to to share the news of Maction. Some great stuff all around there. Looking forward to continuing to partner with the Mid American Conference and grow our brand, as well as continuing to push that news and to, to share the the blessing that Maction is to us. Obviously, Northern Illinois moves on to the tail greeter cure bowl um to take on coastal carolina and then kent state despite the loss gets to move on to the idaho potato bowl where they will face wyoming who played a couple of mac schools earlier this year so it'll be really interesting to see how how they respond for that and prepare for that bowl game but what you overall final impressions on your experience at ford field compared to a year ago yeah, you know, we, like we mentioned, we were there last year as well. There was the big difference, obviously, last year was no fans, no fans, no concession stands. It was just media and players and staff. That was just about it. So it was really cool seeing Ford Field in there, uh, full, and not to say full, but with fans in it. Um, it was cool to be a part of the press conference. Those things we couldn't do last year, those were all via Zoom. So it was cool to sit in a press conference and, you know, raise your hand and, and ask a coach a question or ask players questions. Um, even though it was, the same the same event it was i think an entirely different experience yeah and that's that's where i was at like this whole experience was just absolutely night and day compared to what it was last year it was a ghost town last year and this mm-hmm. this year i mean it was cool we got to see oh, i'm sorry i'm just gonna say it to all of our toledo fans who listen to me know how much i love my rockets i got to meet my favorite mac mascot mission like how cool was that comes we over did. And, we did you know, give we us did pictures mission, yeah. and man that i mean that was cool and you know speaking to 
to his handler and just what they do and how he lives at Northern Illinois campus and how he's revered as a God over there. It's, it, that was a really cool experience. And I mean, it just, the energy was so much different. Of course, there was more media there. There were more, more fans, obviously more things going on. It felt like a real game versus last year. It felt like we were watching a glorified scrimmage. Yeah. That's pretty much what it felt like, but yeah, you're getting to see the fans and getting to see former players from NIU and Kent State around, that was cool to see, too, them making the trip up there to support their alma mater. Mm-hmm. Uh, you and I stood next to Jordan Lynch and didn't realize it until <laughs> after the fact. Yeah, I'm we were still what, upset about that. What, 10 feet from him at one point? If that. And I, I saw a picture of him on Twitter after the game, and I go, son of a bitch, we were sitting right next to him. <laughs> yeah, he was right there and, you know, out there you know, talking to the young guys and giving them encouragement and support. And I, and you know, a guy like him who comes back to support his program, he, he doesn't need a badge to walk wherever people are like, Oh, that's Jordan Lynch. Cool. He can go with it. Yeah. Go and do whatever. And you know, I believe he's still coaching high school football over in that area. So it's not, he, you know, he's, a, I'm sure he's around the program quite often. Yeah, that makes sense. I think that, I think that's accurate, but great to see all again, like you said, these former players come out, support their program and hats off to friend of the program, coach hammock for a great, great victory again great talking to him pre-game on the field uh post-game uh talking to him on the field and just kind of hearing just how pumped he was about this victory and just having that moment with him really looking forward to catching up with him here soon and you know helping them uh or in helping us celebrate with him that mac championship that i know that he's been starved for ever since he joined that coaching staff yeah and, and you know it's great for him it's great for that program especially being such a young team uh, the teams that have a lot of momentum going into next season. Well, they got to get to the bowl game, obviously, first, but when they regroup next season, they're going to have a, they're going to have quite the momentum role. Sure. Spo, moving past the MAC championship, again, great time, great atmosphere, lots of fun. We have a record eight MAC teams will be attending bowl games this year. A lot of exciting stuff, but we have three bowl games for those MAC programs kicking off this weekend. We've got Toledo taking on Middle Tennessee in the Bahamas Bowl, Northern Illinois taking on Coastal Carolina in the Tail Greeter Cure Bowl, and then for our Saturday slate, this is Eastern Michigan taking on Liberty in the Lending Tree. We've got three, three exciting re- ma- matchups there. Three really good games. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, to what Coastal Carolina, that's going to be a fun one to watch, and I use Coastal Carolina. I, so I, I, a lot of people are saying coastal Carolina is going to absolutely dominate this Northern Illinois team. And I disagree. Coastal Carolina was ranked as a, I think God is ranked as high as number 12 or 13 in the nation this year, um, had a couple peculiar losses, but Northern Illinois has done nothing but improve every single game. Mm-hmm. You, you look at what they've done and what they continue to do. They, uh, this is this is going to be a fun one. You know, I know the line is in favor of Coastal Carolina. If Coastal Carolina projected to win ten and a half, if you're if you're a betting person, and the matchup predictor says they have a seventy eight percent chance of winning, this same Coastal Carolina team only beat Buffalo by one score, and I don't even think mm-hmm. it was one score. I think it was I think it was literally a field goal. I think it was just three points. Yeah, it was twenty eight to twenty five at Buffalo. After obliterating Kansas, you know, after playing, I think, the Citadel, I mean, you look at their losses, a three-point loss at Appalachian State, and then a two-point loss versus Georgia State, who is playing another MAC team. So Mm -hmm. I I think that this is is a game that I'm sure Coach Hammock loves being the underdog. You know, nobody's giving them a chance. Nobody's going to give them anything on this. That's what he loves. He, he, and he's mentioned it. He loves being the underdog. You know, don't, don't talk about us. Let us, let us do our thing and shock everybody. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen in this game. Yeah. And I use getting hot at the right time. I think, you know, the way they ended their season, I've seen, you know, you take the last game against you with the grain of, or with uh, WMU with the grain of salt because Rocky Lombardi did not play. Uh, They rested his shoulder to get him ready for the MAC championship. But outside of that, you look at how they played against Kent State a couple of weeks ago. That was the most complete game NIU has played all year long, I think. And I think they're right. Like you mentioned, they're getting hot at the right time against the Coastal Carolina team, who has gotten some national notoriety for both positive and negatives over the past couple of years. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're starting to you know, gain some traction, but NIU is right there with them. Yeah, and I mean, you know, you know, I'm looking at 
this this roster for Coastal Carolina. I mean, they've got a lot of they've got a lot of talent sprinkled throughout this team. Not taking anything away from what they can do, they're very good at moving the ball around. Um, I mean, they've got you know twenty six hundred passing yards, you know rushing. They've got combined as a team, you know two thousand seven hundred seventy five rushing yards. You know, they this is a team who can come out and they can they can score and they can do whatever they need to do. Uh, Grayson McCall, their quarterback, um, he alone has 23 touchdowns to just three interceptions. That's, I mean, that's not anything to sneeze about. Like, and all four of their quarterbacks on this roster have played in games this year. So that's there. I wouldn't be surprised to see Coastal mix it up and give us a couple different looks. Um, on offense, especially with the, with their air raid that they seem to have. Um, and then Shamari Jones, their leading receiver, he has 13 touchdown catches for he's 12 yards shy of a thousand yards that, I mean, that's impressive. I'm sorry. That's averaging a touchdown a game. Like Mm -hmm. that's impressive for a, for a receiver. And then the rest of their guys have a whole bunch of touchdowns as well. So this is a team who can and will score every single game, every single time, this is going to be a fun matchup. Yeah, absolutely. This will be a fun one to watch. Uh, what's the time slot on that one? That one is the the 6 o'clock slate for Northern Illinois versus Coastal Carolina. That Yeah, 6 o'clock on Friday. And that one is on ESPN2. Again, that is the Tail Greeter Cure Bowl. Should be a lot of fun. Coastal is favored by 10.5. Uh, over under 63.5 tough one to say, but I think I hit the over, but I think I take the over with a Northern Illinois win. Yeah, I, I think so too. You know, 10 and two, nine and four. Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, your game starting at noon on Saturday on Friday, excuse me. I'm excited Middle Tennessee for this state one. and Toledo down in the Bahamas. I am so pumped for this one. They are playing for sure. the prime minister's trophy. That is the official trophy of that bowl game. Taking place on ESPN, a noon kickoff. Uh, this one, this one's intriguing, right? I, and I think we've talked a lot about what Toledo is capable of doing. How Toledo has so much incredible talent. Obviously, spearheaded by Bryant Kobach, their leading rusher. He's got you know almost thirteen hundred rushing yards and fifteen scores this year. The dynamic freshman quarterback, Decon Finn, has nineteen hundred passing yards, sixteen passing touchdowns. Devin Maddox is le- pacing this receiving core. He's got four scores, but Toledo with has been in, has lost. I think it was, I think I remember reading the stat today has lost four points or four games by a combined nine points this year mm-hmm. of a two point loss to Northern Illinois, a three point loss to central Michigan, a one point loss to Eastern Michigan, I think is what it was. And then a three point loss to Notre Dame. So this is a team who it doesn't matter if it's the defense keeping you in, or if it's the offense keeping you in, this is a team who can stay in games, but Toledo in the last three weeks has put up 800 rushing yards and 11 scores just in the last three games. So what do they need to do? Pound the rock. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you mentioned it. Kobach has looked incredible here as of late. Daquan Finn, he's finally gotten his uh, – he's finally getting right, hot at the right moment. 16 touchdowns, only one interception for 1,800 yards. Kobach is at 1,200 yards rushing on 190 carries on the year. It's a lot of carries for a running back, but he's also got 15 tutties compared to uh, Middle Tennessee State's uh, Martrell Petaway, who is only has 74 carries for 359 and – three touchdowns yep. so this is the game i think toledo if they're going to win it they're going to win it on the ground uh because Quebec has got ha, does have the hot hand and he has looked good as of late yeah and i think it, this one is interesting because there was a lot of mid-season rumor that and it looked like a lot of paperwork that was starting to get filed that middle tennessee and western kentucky would be joining the mid-american conference so for them to meet in the postseason kind of creates an interesting storyline, knowing that these were potential future conference opponents and that obviously no longer the case. I'm excited for this one solely because I think this is a chance for Toledo to come out. You know, obviously they did not achieve their goals this year, goals that we talked to Coach Candle about at Media Day. And, but a few plays go here or there. Toledo's sitting at two losses. 
you know, 11 wins with a Mac championship. This could be, this could be a much different team. They've, they found their groove late the correct way. Um, I don't think Chase Cunningham for middle Tennessee, as good as he is, I don't think that he is able to keep pace with this Toledo high octane offense and the Toledo defense for all intents and purposes is a much stronger defense than people give it credit for. Obviously the loss to Eastern Michigan does not showcase that, but you look at what they've done to their other opponents. Nobody else has scored more than, and I'm just looking at it here. Nobody else in any Toledo win or loss has scored more than 29 points. Mm -hmm. Their, their one, their one loss, obviously to Eastern Michigan, they surrendered 52, but everybody else has scored or sorry, no more than 32 points. Notre Dame scored 32 points. So it's uh, this is a much improved Toledo defense. In all of their wins, Toledo has kept everybody under 29. So this is a much improved defense. I, it, it, we'll, we'll see. I, uh, I don't want to get too high on Toledo. I picked them quite a lot in our pick them this year, and that, was, that proved detrimental at times. But I think if Toledo is going to go out and win, they're going to go win a game in 80 degree weather down in the Bahamas. And that's exciting stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think this is a game that, you know, if, if anything's going to hurt Toledo, it's going to be penalties. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they average 88 penalty yards per game. It's not ideal. Not ideal it's at a, all. Just on the year, they've had 118 penalties for 1,056 yards. That is, if anything's going to cripple Toledo, it's going to be that, you know, Kobach gets a nice big run. It go, comes back on a hold. Uh, you have a pass interference down the field that moves the ball to the spot of the foul. Yeah. So the Toledo keeps those things clean. I think they, uh, they're a clear shot to win this one. Yeah, I think so too. That's been their, their kryptonite this season. I, imagine having that many yards just as a rusher. Yeah. You know, in penalties, like, if I'm a coach, season. yeah. If I'm a coach, I'm I'm happy with that. I'll take that. So, uh, but if I'm a coach and those are my penalty yards, I'm not not too thrilled with that. So, no. so hopefully, you know, Coach Candle has the boys ready to go, ready to stay focused. Again, that one is on ESPN at noon on Friday. I will probably have that game on while continuing to work. I'll have it on in the background to finish out my day and. Yeah, I'm excited for that one. Obviously, go Max and go Rockets on that one. As we move into the last game of bowl opening weekend, it's the Lending Tree Bowl featuring Eastern Michigan versus Liberty. That kicks off at 5.45 p.m. on ESPN on Saturday. Liberty is probably the prohibitive favorite. Both teams come in with a 7-5 and five record. This one's going to mm-hmm. be really, really interesting. Eastern Michigan has some really interesting wins on their record. Obviously, big win against Toledo, big peculiar win against Western Michigan, but then they drop a dud against Central Michigan and lose a really interesting game to Ohio this year. So Eastern Michigan, who finished fourth in the MAC West, really struggled at times, you know, losses to Ball State, Northern Illinois. Um, Ohio and central Michigan, Ohio being the one that really kind of confuses me, but then you flip the script and you look at what Liberty has done. Liberty, obviously, you know, beating old dominion, beating UAB, beating the same middle Tennessee team we were just talking about, but then they have peculiar losses to a, a close loss to Ole Miss, but then an absolute blowout loss to Louisiana and a two score loss to army so it's it'll be really interesting to see what liberty comes out to do in this game i think that they've got a lot of good firepower but you know i i look at what ben bryant does for eastern michigan what Jawan hamilton does and hassan Bedon. i mean this is this is a team who can go out and score if they're if they're locked in they can go out and score at will yeah, no doubt about it. I think Hugh Freeze has done a great job at Liberty ever since he's gotten there. He's kind of made Liberty relevant in college football. Uh, you know, they've had a couple of great runs. I know uh, – oh, who was their coach not too long uh, before Hugh Freeze? Uh, um, was it Kiffin, right? Was, didn't Kiffin go there? Um, I can I can find out real quick. But, I for, uh, no, maybe he didn't. I forget. No, he didn't. He didn't. That's all right. Uh, but nevertheless – 
Liberty's a team that a couple of years ago you never even heard of. And so now they're playing on bowl games and being relevant, you know, somewhat to a degree in college football. Uh, but this is going to be an interesting game. I think Ben Bryant you know, on the year, he's not as stout as I guess we thought he would be. You know, on right. the year, he's 2,921 yards with four touchdowns, six picks, and a QBR of 57.4. Um, I thought we would get a little more production out of him this year. Uh, with having Boudon, who's just under 1,000 yards at 932. I uh, this is I think a game you look at the numbers here an over under a 58 and a half and Liberty mm-hmm. Liberty's favored by nine and a half I think that's probably fairly accurate I think both these teams can score I think both these teams will score I think it's gonna be the trend of a lot of these Mac games here early on is it's gonna be a lot of offense very little defense mm-hmm. and uh it was Turner Gill who was Turner the Gill, coach before right. Hugh Freeze so that's yeah, I think I think you're right though. I think that there's going to be potential for a lot of scoring, um, some potential for some defense. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. But yeah, I mean they've done an absolute phenomenal job. And what's interesting about Hugh Freeze, right, is he had he resigned from Ole Miss mm-hmm. and was picked up to be the coach at at Liberty and it's Liberty is one of those teams. They're very similar to coastal Carolina. They've made the F CS to FBS transition in the last several years. And I mean, they've, they've made the most of it. I think a lot of those FCS teams could very well compete consistently in the FBS and they are very, very good at what they do. Um, They started out six and oh last year. They actually finished 10 and one last year. This year, they, you know, they obviously finished 10 and two to get to where they are at, but very exciting stuff for this game. I'm super pumped to watch this one. I think that if anything, Malik Willis for, for Liberty, you know, some great numbers, 24 touchdowns, 2,600 passing yards. The number, if I'm Eastern Michigan's coaches, I highlight is the 12 interceptions he's thrown. So he's got a mm-hmm. two to one touchdown to interception radio. Not great. You know, that's not what you want. Um, you obviously move down uh, to the same guy. He's uh, he's their leading rusher as well. So if you can find a way to neutralize him, Eastern Michigan can win this game. He, he has 189 rushes for 820 yards and 11 scores. You, you eliminate his threat, force him to do something other than what he does. You know, it sounds like he's a great dual threat quarterback. I, I think you you eliminate him or neutralize him. Eastern Michigan can go down and win this ball game. They really can. You know, Eastern's one of those teams who they're. I think they're a second half team. Uh, they really showed it against Ball State this year. Ball State had a nice comfortable lead, and then the second half, uh, the uh, Eastern came out of nowhere and put some points on the board and made it a rel- relatively closer game than what we had thought originally. But this is a game that I think it might be a little too much for Eastern. I think they're going to compete. But I think this is the first Mac loss of the bowl season. Yeah, I think so. I think you are absolutely correct on this. If Eastern doesn't figure out how to neutralize this Liberty offense, this very high powered offense. Do you have any bowl season predictions based off of what you're going to see out of the Mac? Uh, I know we have a record eight programs playing in postseason play. Anything uh, special? Oh, um, you know, you look at it here. That could be an interesting one by three. A home game for them. It could be a fun one to watch. I think North Texas, Ohio, both teams six and six. Miami is, uh, I have Ohio's favored by three. They have both State and Georgia State down at the Bowl. Georgia State's minus four and a half. Uh, you go down here to uh, Nevada, Nevada versus Western. Western's favored by three and a half. And the final game of Max season, uh, Christmas, I don't know, New Year's Eve, uh, Central at Central playing Boise at the Ball State uh, and Barstool, if I can talk, Barstool Arizona <laughs> Bowl, uh, or Boise State's favored by seven and a half. That I think is my most, most intriguing game of Bull Mac is CMU and Boise State. But we'll get into that next show. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think here the first I think here the first weekend of bowl season the, the mat goes two and one. Okay. 
going for a two and one. I'm a, I'm optimistic. Uh, I like two and one there. I think, and I know I'm putting a lot of hope on Eastern Michigan's defense, but I think the Mac can go three and zero to kick off opening weekend. And I'd love to see it. I'd love to see the Mac go eight and zero. Uh, will it happen? That remains to be seen. It's uh, one game at a time. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, you know, if they're going to do it, this team's right playing in the Mac, and uh, you know, they, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen this year. Sure. So, well, cool, man. I think that about wraps it up for us this week. Nice, short, simple. Yep. Keep it, keep it simple for us. And uh, any parting thoughts? Season's here. It's an exciting. We've got a lot, not only in the Mac, but a line of just great games the next couple of weeks, the next month, really. Uh, and they'll, they'll be fun to watch. It'll be fun to pay attention to. And, uh, you know, we might have an announcement here in the next couple of days. So keep an eye out on our social media for that, because that's going to be really exciting. Yeah, so we'll, uh, yeah, we'll uh, not tease too much more. I know that there's a, there's a thing where people love spoilers and teasers, but may have something fun cooking up. And we'll, uh, like, like AJ said, we'll definitely keep you posted and keep you updated. But, yeah, I think that's about it for me. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, be sure to t- turn on your TVs this weekend to watch some bowl season action. We are excited, ready to see this season come to a close, ready to watch the Mac compete and continue to elevate their brand nationally. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Continue to follow us on socials. Check out our website. It's been revamped. It's updated. looks great. And thank you guys, and we will see you next week. See you.